Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here at Muncaster Castle here in the L Lake District. And I'm here with Ewan uh, Frost Pennington, whose family owns this castle. And we've actually had Ewan on before. My colleague Alan Fine interviewed him uh, back at Destination Brenton in Washington, D.C. But we're actually at the castle now, so it's a little bit of a different scene. So we're going to talk about the castle. Uh, you know, they, they are the owners, they they're go back in history, and we're going to find out about that and more on Insider Travel Report. So you know, I've, I saw the video with you and Alan, and I said, we got to go to this castle, and here we are. It's, it's wonderful. And, and how old is this castle? When, what is it date to? So the records, uh, or the first records of it are 1208, but uh, it's built on Roman foundations and there could have been a structure before that. So um, it's pretty, yeah, the, pretty old. Pretty, pretty old. And so, and now you, you open it up to visitors. So how, how can I come visit the castle? Well, I mean, yeah, just to build on that, it's like, so it's been in my family for all of that time. So, oh, so, all so say, say all the time, say there's been a Pennington and all that ever since. In fact, we can't, you, we're in the Great Hall here, which is surrounded by portraits, some of them of your family, right? Oh, all of them pretty much, yeah. I mean, we've got different rooms with different family lines in. Uh, but yeah, the vast majority of portraits in here I'm bizarrely related to some going back to like uh, the 1300s. And your, so. your father gave us a little tour earlier and pointed out very in depth some of the characters in the family, the ones you liked, the ones you didn't like, it was kind of fun. Yeah, exactly. Uh, with 800 years of history, uh, there's a lot of characters that you, um, you kind of develop yeah. over it. Like as in the, the tax collector who was disliked. Yeah, I see so the, he's over there, right? We see them right yeah, over there. And yeah. Then there's, uh, yeah so there's, and then there's other, other other characters in the family all around. And then there's an, a whole other other room that you have all these more even more portraits, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you haven't seen half of it, to be honest. Um, upstairs, we've got even more um, around the place, but those are those are rooms that we're looking to open up as, as bedrooms in the long term. Yeah, well, that'll um, be interesting to see. And then you also have a wonderful library where you have some great volumes, and it's it's and every one of these rooms has a roaring fire, so it's wonderful. That library was amazing, right? Yeah, the library is my favorite room for sure. It's an octagonal room. I don't know if you if you got shots of that, but yeah. that is really special. And I think the thing is that probably won't come through the camera just how awesome it is. Like the high ceiling in there um, and the symmetry of the room and the sheer number of books, there's 6,000 books in there, really um, gives it pretty spectacular feel. There's no better place to be drinking a whiskey after dinner or the like. And, and I think your father pulled out a volume and there was like a little note from Napoleon in it, which was oh, kind he of interesting. Brought, he got it out, he got yeah. It out. He got it out for us, which I'm like, whoa. Because there's yeah, like, Queen Victoria's signature in there as well, like back from obviously, she, well, the Victorian times are named after her. Um, there's a whole host of first editions and the like. Yeah, um, the kid's amazing. Now, where are we located here in the Lake District? Because we, we actually took a wonderful, uh, it's called Mountain Goat. It's a, a bus, you were on it with us, actually. Yeah. You go up and over the hill, it, it, that's, a, that's another story. And we, to get here, and, uh, but, but you know, we, and then we're now in this beautiful valley, you've got a, about 2,000 acres surrounding the castle, right? So, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, there's 77 acres of like a pristine garden. Uh, hopefully you'll get some shots of that later on, because I think that's pretty impressive. But it looks out onto the mountains towards the Lake District. So one side of us is the ocean, or the, and, and down below us is a tidal river, which is what the castle is defending against. So it was basically a way of uh, making sure that everyone that crossed the river had, had good intention or defending against them. Or, uh, or, or you might have paid some taxes too. So. Or you <laughs> might have had to pay some taxes, or as my dad just taught me, some rum, because it so used to be where the rum traders went. The other, that's the other. Um, yeah. which is, a, is news to me after today. But, um, but yeah, essentially we're, uh, th th the other side of the Lake District is the kind of core Lake District where most people know, whereas here we're a bit of a kind of hidden secret. We definitely don't get many of the international market and it's kind of a bit of a British hidden gem in, in many respects, in my opinion. So kind of, um, I mean, we do attract a big number of tourists, but they're mainly just during the day. Outside of that, we have free reign to do some real 
special things and offer some real special experiences. Well, and that's it. And we're, 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 you're kind of hosting us. It's a very special experience. And, uh, and I think you can go out. There's falconry here. There's a lot of things going on. I can see places where you can, I guess you can have music and concerts out there. Uh, but actually, the, the fact that this is a family-owned castle still, and you are now the what, head of operations for the castle. Right? Uh, yeah, I'm head of operations. And we're in this transition period between my parents and I where we, I'm bringing in new ideas. My parents have been running it for like the last 35 years, but are in their 60s now. And so there's this kind of tension of me coming in saying, let's do something different. Let's start to use these spaces how they were designed. Um, I mean, we've always done it, but we've relied on the initiative of the customers to come along and say, I want this. Whereas now we're wanting to make it a bit easier and more accessible for people, especially from the international market to come and be able to, to use these spaces as our ancestors intended. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. And in fact, you know, I think he's, your, your father said that he used to have like ropes uh, in the library and you kind of said, well, let's take that out. And now it looks like actually it's a library. There's books you could walk right up and uh, I mean hopefully you won't be over overrun by tourists but it, it, on the other hand it is a library that it does, needs to be accessible right well exactly like tourists are our lifeblood in terms of uh, it's the income that we need to sustain this place because this place yeah. costs an insane amount to to maintain um, uh, and so we're, we're paying for that so why not use it the whole time like yeah we and and as you say move away from maybe trying to attract large numbers of tourists to saying okay well actually it might be more sensitive and appreciated more if we if we use these rooms with smaller numbers right. but offer real premium experiences well, and that's that's the kind of edge that I'm coming at it with. Well I think you're so far with us and we're, we're a group a little under uh, 20 something I forget what we are but uh, that's the kind of size group I think would be good to come in here not that that many of them but you do need to upkeep the castle as you as you told me you said you know you you left a like, I think you got a nice job out in San Francisco and you came back here because the lure of running a castle was pretty good. Yeah I mean it's it's a kind of a blessing and a curse of course like anything in the um, kind of tied to the castle and tied to work hard to, to try and make it work and um, yeah uh, it is I mean lots of people would be envious of myself living in a castle um, but they don't see the other side of it which is in the room that we the drawing room um, that had water damage and it was costing hundreds of thousands of pounds to repair and if you think about that in terms of tourists that's a lot of tourists to, to attract yeah, you got a lot of people to come to through maintain, here. yeah um, and that is the income that kind of keeps us going as a family and so that's why we're kind of embracing it well you, you've acquired the family business that's for sure and you're here and I, your father just walked in so I can't say too much but yeah. <laughs> and it's it's been it's been great to be here and great to see you. And now, just give it, give us the how uh, tra our travel advisors can get in touch uh, with uh, you and, and organize uh, tours for their their customers. Yeah, so the best way is to email directly to me, um, uh, which is Ewan E W A N at Muncaster co dot uk. Um, that's the same as the website, so muncaster.co.uk. Yeah, dot .co .uk. No, So not, I, I no always dot forget com. that Americans aren't used to us saying, yeah, but yeah. in America it's dot .com, whereas in the UK it's dot .co and then another dot .uk. Amazing. Yeah. Well, Ewan, it's been great to see you here. I'm, I'm glad we got a chance to actually see you in your castle as opposed to just uh, Alan had a good chance and nice chat with you in, in DC. He's going to be, be rather envious of me getting a chance to be here. We're in front, in front of a roaring fire here in the Great Hall yeah. and it's been an amazing visit. Again, thank you so much. Well, no, thanks for coming and I uh, hope to see other people watching this sometime soon. Absolutely. I'm James Schillinglaw and this is Insider Travel Report.